Stop taking vitamin D. Is vitamin D harming you? Truths revealed right now. What's up? It's Dr. Living Good. I'm going to break this down for you. This might be the most important piece you've ever seen on vitamin D3. Hit the share button if you're going to learn something out of this or if you do get something out of this. A lot of people need to know the information I'm about to lay out for you, not only just for their overall health, how they may be harming their health, but immune health in general. Check this out. Let's break vitamin D down. First, before I walk you through the harms of vitamin D and how it may be affecting you, check out this sun hormone. So vitamin D, vitally crucial, acts as a hormone inside of your body, meaning it's not only the precursor and required to make all the hormones inside of your body, it literally acts as one. And so the sunshine regulates many of the body processes that we have. We are designed to be creatures in the sun, but we messed this up big time. I was about to see in a moment. The body uses vitamin D to make its hormones. It lowers blood pressure. It decreases blood cholesterol. It lowers excessive high blood sugars. It increases your white blood cells. This thing is having an impact on everything. Why would I be telling you not to take it? Stay tuned. Sunlight changes the cholesterol just underneath the skin. So when sunlight hits the skin, it activates into the active form of vitamin D. That is D3. Now we are putting in a lot of synthetic vitamin D, which is vitamin D2. I'm going to explain the difference in a moment. But we've got to get the sun. If you live in a northern environment, that's about to go away, depending on when you're watching this, or it may never come out fully. If you live in the south, you have an advantage. But what research is getting really clear on, I'm going to show you some of the impacts it's having just on viruses and colds and flus. But if you are not getting exposures daily, 20 minutes at least, 80% exposure, that would be like sunbathing in December. It's not going to happen. It can't happen. We are really losing the sunlight. No wonder colds, flus, sicknesses, and things surge during the colder months. Do you ever wonder why the flu or colds are not prevalent in the summer? Is it just like disappear? The virus is all of a sudden not harmful during these times? Well, what's happening, a big factor of it is we're outside more. That has its own benefits. And then we're in the sunlight. You've got to be able to get the exposure. Now, the other ways you can get vitamin D in, it is absolutely essential for the body acting as the hormone, as we said, salmon. But I'm guessing a lot of you aren't just chowing down salmon all day. But 520 I use from that. Egg yolks, 37 I use. Not nearly enough as the research shows of how to get your vitamin D levels up. So if you've never had them tested, you gotta have them tested. It's vitally crucial to have vitamin D3 high, but are you doing it the right way? And are you harming yourself in the process of that vitamin D3? Let's go deeper. So here is the current research, PubMed research. There's the references at the top uh, that you could go look up. Do you live longer with vitamin D? Good question, because it's being touted as just you know, on some levels of cure-all for so many different conditions. And there's some validity to that I'm gonna show you in a second. But check out this study on vitamin D and mortality rates, death rates. So the research breaks down 42 randomized control trials that you're looking at right there. Short-term, long-term benefits of supplementation with vitamin D. Scroll down to the bottom of the article. I highlighted it there for you or bottom this section of the article. And it says the vitamin D3 dose range 10,000 to 6,000 IUs per day, pretty good dose, were given alone versus a placebo or no treatment. Vitamin D3 significantly reduced mortality rates by 11%. Let me just stop it right there. Vitamin D3 decreases mortality rates by 11%. So why am I telling you to stop taking it? And why am I questioning, is it harm you? Let's go deeper. Whereas vitamin D2, right here, vitamin D2 increases the mortality rate by 4%. Say what? The increased risk of mortality for vitamin D2 were observed in studies with lower intervention doses. So they were taking a little bit less of it, shorter periods of time, but found compared to its counterpart, the natural version, the sunshine version, the time that, kind that you can take and get supplements for vitamin D3, 11% reduction in mortality and death rate. Vitamin D2, 4% increase in death rate. PubMed research, sure, we could dig deeper into this thing, do bigger studies on more people, but the vitamin D you should stop taking is vitamin D2. That is the prescription you take at a 50,000 IU dose typically from the doctor prescribed to you, made by a pharmaceutical company in a lab. Toxic. Stop taking it. 
So the focus is then D3. So it's not that we shouldn't take vitamin D at all, but if you're taking D2 or know a family member that's taking D2, they need to see this video, hit the share button, send that to them. Now, let's go deeper on D3 because is your D3 harming you? And is it being taken properly? Let me explain further. First off, let's just take a gander at what getting vitamin D3 in actually does for your body. This chart is fascinating, blows my mind. You can check your vitamin D levels next time you get a physical, have them test this thing. You are crazy to not ask your doctor to get a vitamin D3 test. And they can test your D2 and actually see how much that is in, of that is in you. But if they're not up on D3 and it's prevalence, you might need to find a new doctor, that's a whole other conversation. But just getting your blood levels above certain points radically reduces disease chances. Now here's all the research kind of compiled into one chart. Your doctor will say, get it above 20. I vehemently disagree. The studies are very clear. 50 is where the normal range should be. Below 100, ideally, but over 50 is where your blood level should be. Check this out. So the chart you're looking at literally breaks down and shows that once we hit that 50 mark, so that's gonna be right up here. This is vitamin D3 levels above 50. We see an 83% reduction in the risk of breast cancer. What? Type one diabetes risks and impact starts to go down. Remember, it has significant impact on blood sugar levels, multiple sclerosis. Colon cancer is decreased by 60%, the risk of it. Ovarian cancer, up to 17% reduction. Nothing comes close to an 83 or a 60% reduction in breast and colon cancer risk that costs pennies a day. Nothing comes close to that. So here's some really positive information. Of course, you have to have a well-rounded approach, but D3, is for me, D2, not for you, right? Meaning we gotta get D3 into the system. Look at how it impacts. Now, why the reference of 20? If that exists, why are doctors not teaching the same thing that you're talking about, Dr. Living Good? Because what it primarily was focused on back in the day is getting rid of rickets, bone disorder. If you get it above 20, there it is, right on the chart. It's a 99% reduction in rickets. Haven't seen a case of rickets, pretty much took care of that but there's a lot of other benefits from this. But are you taking it the wrong way, the wrong dosage? And is it harming you? What do I mean by that? Let's go further. So if we look at, oh my gosh, before we even go there, this research out of the Journal of American Medical Association makes this thing a viral, sh viral shareable thing right here. Listen, we're in the midst of viruses, colds, flus, taxing our immune system. What do we do? Do we get a shot? What medication do we take? Do we stay apart from each other? Do we wear a mask? Any of those things, fine, you can do them, but those are just protective measures. What can you proactively do to build up your immune system? Check out this research. Mind-blowing. Now, the Journal of American Medical Association says 1.77 times. Times what? Let me show you. The relative risk of testing positive was 1.77 times greater for patients with likely deficient vitamin D status compared with patients with likely sufficient vitamin D status. What that means is if your levels of D3 in your body are in that low range, below 30, and I would recommend even below 50, you are insufficient on the amount of vitamin D3 in your body and you are 1.77 times more likely to get a virus, let alone flu, which I can show you more on that in a second. 1.77, almost a double, almost two times the better protection when you have high enough vitamin D3 levels. Wow. Why are we not talking about this right now? To help surge the immune system. Check it out, let's go a little bit further. They actually did analysis of people that are getting proper amounts of vitamin D3 based on the areas that you live and how it was holding up against this immune system attack of a virus. Here's what was found, okay? Vitamin D can act as an immune modulator. It prevents excessive expression of inflammatory cytokines. You've heard of the cytokine storm. It increases the oxidative burst. What is that? Well, that is a bunch of macrophages, your fighters inside your bodies. It stimulates this antimicrobial resistance, neutrophils, more fighters, monocytes, more fighters, natural T killer cells. These are like snipers inside of your body and epithelial cell lining the rep respiratory tract. They play a protective role. Vitamin D3 supercharges the army inside of you. That's what it's saying. It's like the general that says, let's go, let's go, let's go to the fight. Secondly, to date, reported cases appear more prevalent in areas of lower versus higher sun exposure. So they looked at in the United States and its territories, this chart right here is what you're seeing. This is the amount of death rate 
And when the blood levels, which are down here, concentration, there it is again, we get the thing above 20, hasn't had much of an impact, just a little bit of a dip when we go above 20 right there. So if the, all of these people are dying that have really low vitamin D, when we get it above 20, that risk goes down a little bit. When we hit that sweet spot and get it above 30, that's where this thing surges. And if vitamin D levels are above that and we're getting proper sun exposure, vitamin D3 in the body is going up, 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 and look at the death rates. These are up-to-date numbers on what's happening there just with vitamin D levels being high enough. So one, we gotta get sun exposure. Maybe you live in a part in the United States. Right now, you can't get that sun exposure or the big globe in the, sky, in the sky is gonna show up less and less potent over the coming months or whenever the period of time is. Then you're not getting as much vitamin D, so you've gotta supplement with it. D2, we now know is very toxic, increases mortality rate, should be thrown out, not given to your dog or a neighbor you don't like. Just get rid of that stuff. Switch to vitamin D3, but how you take it and what you take it with is insanely important because is your vitamin D3 harming you? Let's go to those studies. D3 and vitamin K. Here is um, the understood research and where we're at right now that if your D3 is not taken with vitamin K, you may be significantly harming the arteries of your body. Okay, so we're understanding this now. This can't be just 100% conclusive. The research is still being done, but here's what we know. Vitamin D toxicity, too much of D3 in the system, causes hyperkalemia. What it does is it takes calcium out of the body, out of the blood, puts it into the arteries. What this is going to do is cause hypercalcemia in the arteries, hardening of your arteries over time. That's associated with heart disease. And then vitamin K deficiency is also associated with heart disease and hardening of the arteries. So vitamin K is helping it, too much vitamin D is hurting it. So the two of these working together presumptively would start to lower it. So we know vitamin K, K2 by itself, decreases hardening your arteries. If you've got a family member right now that is hardening of their arteries, they gotta be on K2, they need to see this video right now. But if you take it by itself, it does help the arteries, but it still doesn't help to boost your immune system. You got all these benefits with D3, now we're seeing benefits with K2 on your arteries. If the two of those come together, you start getting some magic. So what we know that if you take the two of them together, K2 decreases heart disease risk, decreases hardening artery risk, and they pair together to do this. Essentially, vitamin D takes the calcium out of the blood, puts it in the artery. We can't have it stay there. Calcium is supposed to end up in the bones. K2 takes it from the arteries and puts it in the bones. So the two of them together is like a, a pair of taxis, right? to and fro. It's like an airplane that's shuttling stuff back and forth across your body. And so that's exactly what we want working together, but we can't stop there. So is your D3 harming you? Well, it probably is if you're not taking K2 with it. But what else is absolutely essential? Because vitamin D is not about what you take. It's what you absorb. You can take vitamin D all day, but if it's the wrong kind without the wrong, uh, without the right mechanisms, then it's going to either harm you or do you no good. But if you take the proper amount, you absorb it properly, your body can use it properly, the benefits are insane, which we've already seen. So how do you take it properly? Well, overwhelming research, I've spent months on this to understand what does D3 need? D3 complex, lack of vitamin D stores, uh, lack of vitamin D stores increases parathyroid hormone production, which increases blood pressure. So your D3, if you don't have enough of it, increased blood pressure, lots of problems going on in the system. So what we want to look at, it's also been looked at insulin resistance, metabolism syndromes, uh, metabolic syndromes. So blood pressure, cholesterol, metabolism, cholesterol, uh, um, uh, uh, all these different problems that D3 is, is creating. But if you, you need 244% more oral vitamin D if you're not simultaneously taking magnesium and vitamin K2. So we know we need K2 for the calcification. We also need magnesium. Vitamin D depletes magnesium in the body over time if you don't have enough. So magnesium is required for converting vitamin D to its active form. And it improves brain plasticity. Who doesn't want that? Their brain to be more plastic, plastic to be able to respond. Vitamin D is even, even in its active form is useless in the absence of magnesium. Wow, what a statement. Magnesium deficiency has been implicated in severe neurological disorders, including cognitive dysfunction. Here's what I'm reading right now. Your body has to go from, you know, when the sunlight hits your skin and it has to convert into the active form of vitamin D so your body can start using it with the immune system and blood pressure and blood sugar and metabolism and all these things. 
Well, that same thing has to be done when you take vitamin D3. D2, throw it out. D, D3, yes, you gotta get K2 with it for the calcium balance, but you need magnesium with it because your body's gonna get that in there and it's gonna have to turn it onto the active form. It needs the magnesium to do that, to be the catalyst to do it. So if you're taking high doses of vitamin D3, I experienced this personally, I started to get magnesium deficient over time, which most of us are magnesium deficient as it is. And we don't need to overdo it, but we do need to take a little bit while we're taking the D3, and it's going to help the conversion, which can't even happen if there's no magnesium, and it's gonna make sure you don't get deficient in it because it affects your brain. It affects your concentration. It affects your muscles. It affects your digestion. We've gotta have proper amounts of magnesium to go with it. Let's keep going even further. Zinc is an immune booster. It supports and aids the absorption of vitamin D. Zinc works with D. Zinc is getting a lot of press right now because of its impact on viruses and allowing the proper things to get into a cell to destroy the virus. So it needs zinc. Also, fat-soluble vitamins. Your body's vitamin A metabolism and the receptors for both A and D only function correctly in the presence of zinc. Zinc helps all these friends work properly. What a good friend zinc is. Lipoic acid is the other one. When combined with vitamin D is shown to slow aging, especially in the brain. So here's what all of this means. Vitamin D3 coming into the body, surges the immune system, protects you from colds and flus, has a powerful impact on blood pressure, blood sugar, and cholesterol. You must take it with vitamin K and the other fat soluble vitamins, E, A, E, D, and K. Those are the four fat soluble vitamins taken together, help each other get absorbed, help each other do all the transporting and jobs they need to do in the body. One without the other serves partially worthless. All of those need magnesium to make them go as a catalyst, as well as zinc to make them go as a catalyst. And then together you get this army of A, E, D, K, zinc, magnesium, surging the immune system without the harms of taking one of them solo. Health needs a holistic approach. All of these things are working together. Most vitamin C's, if not every single, vitamin D's, if not every single one of them on the market that I see, one is either vitamin D2, that's the toxic prescribed stuff, or it's D3 by itself, or it's just D3 with K, vitamin K. No one's going to the extra extent to understand what else is this imbalancing in the body. No one else is, is talking about this thing. So to get the sun hormone in, get the blood level above 50, it's not what you take, it's what you absorb. And you need A, E, and K in order to absorb it. You need magnesium in order to activate it. You need zinc and lipoic acid to get it to the proper places in the body. And you gotta test regularly to make sure that's happening. But you can literally take 244% less vitamin D when you have all these working together. That's exactly why I formulated the Living Good Daily Vitamin D. It's got this ultra absorption formula that allows 244% better absorption into the body, which means you're taking less, you're not overloading on D3, which we know can cause hypercalcemia and get too much calcium in the blood or in the tissues. It's got the K2 in it to properly absorb and not cause calcium issues. It's got A and E in its proper forms to help synergistically work together with all the fat soluble vitamins. It's working with zinc, so you get zinc and that at the same time for the immune boosting properties. Lipoic acid is getting it to the brain. Magnesium is making sure you're not getting deficient and activating the vitamin D and they're fat soluble vitamins. So what that means is you have to eat fat in order to absorb them. See all the missing pieces. So one, you might've been getting harmed from your vitamin D taking the wrong kind. Two, you might not be taking it with these essentials or could you be calcifying your arteries? And three, you, if you don't absorb it, it's worthless. It just goes right through you. It's about what you absorb. So you need fat to absorb all of these fat soluble vitamins, fat included. Cause I just wanted to not even think about it. I wanted my immune boosting protocol to lower my risk of colds and flus to get absorbed into my system without overdoing one element of it, taking the proper type of real food to match what the sun does in my body all in one simple bottle for cents a day. I got a really big weapon in my immune arsenal at that point. And right now you can get this 50% off. If we're gonna go gangbusters on giving out medications or masks or mandates 
why don't we start making it really easy to do something to strengthen the immune system, not just protect it, but make it stronger. Here's one tool in that arsenal to do it. 50% off with the link that is seen right there. I'm gonna be teaching this and a whole lot more about immune health. When you click the link below, you can register for free and we're gonna break down all things immune system so you can get proactively building your arsenal of the immune system and your army on the inside, not just protecting. You can't just do that. If you're going to do those things, you, we all have to build an immune system. That's what that is about. And when you register, you get the opportunity to get a new bottle of the Living Good Daily Vitamin D3 for 50% off and you'll get a subscription with it, which allows you to continue to have that through the winter months in the body at all times to keep the blood levels high. When you get it tested, that thing is going up with the ultra absorption formula and then you're going to be more equipped, shows the research to protect the inside. It's one of a lot of things we got to do to stay healthy, but it's so easy, but there's so much misnomers. Stop taking it if you're doing D2. If you're taking D3, you've got to not just take it with vitamin K, but it needs A and E with it. Don't deplete magnesium. Take that with it as well. Zinc and lipoic acid are going to get it to the proper areas all over your body where it is needed. And below, you can get that by clicking on the link right now for a limited time. If you're seeing this still, it's 50% off and you can get that formula. All of those together, extensive research has gone into this thing that I just laid out for you right there to help understand how do we get this ultra absorbed, not overdo one molecule and make sure we're properly taking a nutrient that is vitally important, like a hormone in our body, vitamin D. Now you know the truth about vitamin D3, share this thing. If that was helpful for you, someone you love needs to see this thing and needs to put something proactive into their arsenal for their immune system, for their blood pressure, for their cholesterol, for their overall health this year, this week for cents a day. So share this thing, click the link below. You can join me in the entire Immune You Masterclass to help lay out all this information to help you to understand this and many more proactive things starting soon. Click the link, it's a free registration. We're gonna give you a bunch of goodies and a bunch of guides below so you can be able to get a pr flu protocol, so you'll be able to get an immune boosting foods protocol and 50% off the vitamin D that I just talked about. You can gra grab right now if you're still seeing this. So click below, get registered. The masterclass is starting soon. You're gonna get the entire uh, layout for four days and the recordings of it to be able to view 12 sessions at least 12, way more hours probably than that, of all this content of what you can do to get proactive with your immune system to keep it strong. So tune in soon, my friends. The link is below. Share this thing. Help someone else out. Sharing is caring. And if they are taking vitamin D, they need to see this video. Now you know who else needs to know. I'm going to see you real soon. Click the link below.